do you make of this prepared statement given out by the utilities company? Exactly. Now, I want you to hop up to Graham's house and get a personal statement out of him. Why pick on me? Whenever newspaper man in the business has tried to see that old buzzer, they can't get by his front door. Am I Houdini? Yeah, sometimes. Here, wait a minute. Here's a lead for you. If you can't get to Graham, locate Gloria Palmer. She'll lead you right to him. You know, wherever he is, she won't be far away. Yeah? Listen, that romance is as dead as last year's World Series. One of these days, your headline will read, Follies, Beauty, Wedge Racketeer. Gloria's been running around with Tony Marchetti the last few weeks. Good, that's better still. Watch Tony, too. He's using her for a come on so he can get his hooks into Graham's dough. Now get up there and get the story, Steve, and it'll make you. Make me what? And me with two tickets to the football game. The biggest story of the year, and you talk to me about football tickets. Do you realize, Steve, that thousands of people will be affected if Graham Utility smashes? You think about them. I'm thinking about the football game. Three o'clock, I find me on the old 50-yard line yelling my head off for my alma mater. Graham will have to send his statement in by mail. Are you going to Graham's? No. Yes, you are. Oh, no, I'm not. Wait here, I'll be back in 15 minutes. Yeah, that's what you said the last time. You owe me 2140 right now. Gee, you might at least offer to put some gas in the car. Well, I am surprised. Do you really think I'd try to get you? Yes! Now, you know that's the wrong answer, Mike. Listen, this is the home of John Graham, the millionaire. I've got a date with him. And as soon as I come out, I've got to rush right back to the office. Now, if you wait for me, I'll not only pay you, but I'll fill your tank with gas. What do you say? All right. Yeah. Well, how about some dough, Steve? I'm almost out of gas. Thanks, Mike. You can go now. Just what I owe you. Hey, how about my gas? Take my carpet of the soda. How do you do, Mr. Graham? Graham? My name is Marion. Frank Marion. You have my reservation. Oh, yes, I have them. Your stateroom is room 74. Do it. Uh, that man that just left here, Mr. Graham. Is Mr. Marriott. Frank Marriott. What's his stateroom number? I've got to see him a minute before the ship sails. 74. Thanks. What do you do in here? What is one usually do on a boat? Well, that depends. 
some go for a rest, some go to broaden their minds, and uh, some for the certain utility of magnets going. Now, I know you've been thinking to see those. Tell me, are you planning? Not on your life. I never did like the ocean. No? No. Well, you better start getting used to it. What? Come on, kid, I'll see you in the spring. <laughs> young lady if you'd like to care. Pardon me, miss. The young gentleman would like to know... Tell the fresh young man that I'm perfectly capable of asking for a chair if I want one. Or you might also add that we've never been properly introduced. Uh, the young lady seems... Tell the young lady that my name is Steve Haynes. That I'm awfully glad that I've met her. And ask her what a fellow does when he's caught on a boat without a ticket. Tell the young man that I don't sell tickets. Thank the young lady for a very pleasant chat. And I'd like to meet you sometime when you haven't got your interpreter with you. Could you give me the young lady's stateroom number? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. That's against the ship's rules. Would it be against the ship's rules if you should uh, tell me your age? No, but I could tell you that on my grandmother's next birthday, she'd be 84. Hello, Gloria. I want you to meet Mr. Well, Mark. Tony Mark Kenny, the big shop nightclub owner. You've met before. Sure, we're old friends. Are you traveling for your health or by request? Now, what do you think? You look pretty healthy. If I'm going to spend five days on this tub, I'd better find a place to sleep. I'll be seeing you. Here you are, Jane. Think we were lost? Well, I've certainly been wondering what you two have been doing for the last couple of hours. Captain and I have been reminiscing. Oh, but Percy, listen, this is serious with me. Come here, will you? All I've got to do is radio my paper and they'll send the money. Well, it is a little unusual, but I guess it'll be all right. Ah, that's fine. Hope the old man's in a good humor when he gets this. That right off, will you? And when the money comes, deduct the charge. Very good. Oh, I beg your pardon. I hope I didn't hurt you. <laughs> That's quite all right. Oh, say, old cat, do me a favor. Help me out with this, will you? There you are. You're great. I've been trying to work this thing for hours. I'm Ricky Marks, and this is my first voyage. Let's have a little drink and we'll celebrate. Have you got a stateroom? Sure. And a very large bottle. <laughs> you know I don't believe I'm going to like that. Use mine! Drink it, Ruth! You can bunk with me all the way to... all the way to... to... Hey, where are we going? Well, now, there you've got me. I haven't the slightest idea. Well, what difference does it make? Let's go and have a different drink. Wait just a minute. Now, just because you've been such a regular fellow, I'm going to make you a little sexy. Yes? Yeah. 
There you are. Take those. Well, what are these? Those are two tickets for the football game this afternoon. I don't believe I'm going to be able to make it. Thanks! What the hell? What the... Say, this is one day my never miss. <laughs> um, let's have that look. Well, I don't mind if I do. And I can get under my <laughs> when are we going to open the bar? <laughs> You're going to have to tie up your knife. <laughs> this is going to absolutely slay you. <laughs> well, what happened? Hey, uh, there's a friend of mine over there. Do you mind if I ask him to come over and have a drink with us? No, bring him over. We'll tell him to him. <laughs> He's a little hard of hearing, so you've got to talk loud. You understand? Yeah. How about a little gasoline? Why the trip, Tony? Well, can a fellow do a little traveling if he wants to? Why, certainly. How'd you come out with that last breath? Oh, I got life again. <laughs> Gloria traveling with you? No, that's a funny coincidence. She happened to take the same ship. I catch on. Come on over to the bar and have a drink with us. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Okay. The fella doesn't hear very well, so you have to talk loud. All right. Ready, Mark? I want you to meet Tony Mark Kelly. Glad to know you, Tony! Any friend of him? Same here! Great guy, Steve! I'll say he is! One of the finest fellas I ever met! He's been like a brother to me! How long have you known him? Who? Steve! Oh, Steve! Yeah, ever since the boat sailed! How about joining us in a little drink? Gentlemen, gentlemen, please! Not so loud. He's hard of hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Two glasses of sherry, please. How are you, Mr. Kent? You remember me, I'm Steve Haynes. Oh, yes. I never will forget seeing you play Hamlet at the Lyceum. Thank you. Ah, finally caught you without your interpreter. No. I'd have been here a lot sooner if that old ham actor out there hadn't detained me. Who do you mean? The old bozo standing over there at the bar. That's very interesting. Yeah, I've seen him in all these plays. Uh-oh, here he comes. Hang on to your seat. I'll get rid of him. I'd like you to meet Mr. Haynes. He's a great admirer of yours. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I was just telling your um, your daughter what a swell actor I thought you were. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you mean by sneaking in my room without knocking? I ordered whiskey. Straight whiskey, you understand? You numbskull! Now get out of here. And stay out. Yes, sir.
plenty. Was it Graham? Sure it is. He shaved off his mustache and he's wearing glasses. Why do you suppose he wouldn't let me in his face? You know, there's something phony about this whole business. Why, he's trying to give you the runaround, but he won't get away with it. I saw enough money and bombs in his cabin to put us on easy street for life. John? What are you doing for the Seaman's Fund this trip? Nothing yet. Have you any suggestions? Say, why don't we put on an old melodrama? You must have some manuscript in your trunk. That's a good idea, Haynes. Yes. We might do Her Father's Revenge. That's short and only a few characters. Can we depend on you, Jane? Well... In view of the great respect you have for our family uh, talents, I could hardly refuse. <clears throat> and that's swell. You have some costumes on board, haven't you, Captain? Yes, a lot of them we use for our fancy dress ball. Okay, right after lunch we'll all get together and pick out a costume. What about you, Gloria? Sure, I'll help. And Tony, what can you do? You know what I can do. Oh, but this is not that kind of a show. You better operate the spotlight. All right, everybody here is called for rehearsal at two o'clock. Captain's orders. We just have time for a swim. Come on. Captain's orders? Right. I go on this trip the better I like it. Why? Well, there's everything here to please a newspaper man's heart. There's love, there's romance, there's mystery. What's the mystery? You. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We'll have a showdown and soon. Good morning, Miss Marion. I don't mean to be personal, but did anyone ever tell you that you resemble John Graham, the utility magnet? Well, what if I do? What business is it of yours? Oh, none. But I happen to be a heavy investor, and I thought if you were, we could sort of talk things over. Well, I guess I made a mistake. You certainly did. I wish I were, Graham. Well, no harm done. By the way, has anyone told you about the show we're putting on for the benefit of the Siemens Fund? No. I'd like to have you come and see it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, perhaps I will. I'll save you a couple of tickets. Oh, one will be enough. Okay, Mr. Man. Thanks a lot. Somebody stole my swimming trunk. I can't take a swim. What kind of trunks were they? Well, they were the... Hey, these look just like them. And also the room. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you come down to the room and I'll let you have mine. I think they'll just fit. You're a swell guy, Steve. Now you run along. Cool. Come on. We better get dressed and get ready for that show.
to, Henry? I've lost everything. I'm penniless. I know. It means we'll have to go back 20 years now. It's incredible. To think that one man can wipe out the life savings of thousands. Jane. I've planned so much for her. A man like that deserves to be shot. Now remember, boys, the first corner slow and then step. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. That's bad news about the Graham price, isn't it, Captain? Very. Would it surprise you to know that Graham was on this ship? On this ship? Yeah. I followed him here from his house. That's why I made the trip. I want to get a statement. Graham here? Sure. Sitting right over there. Miss Palmer, it's ready, sir. Okay. Now, will you all run over your lines while uh, Miss Palmer does her number? Ladies and gentlemen, we will open our evening's entertainment with a song entitled, Oh Willie, Oh Willie, Come Back, which will be sung by Miss Gloria Palmer, late of the Fowler. Gloria? A devilish sort of a fellow, so gallant and so devilish. Nightly he caught her with tall, soft and mellow, and he won the maiden, so young and so fair. But with his dinner and with his guitar, his amorous song he would play. One night she insisted he speak to Papa, but he said, duty calls me away. With his sister away, then he went. And the tears died her cheeks, then she cried in love. Palmer as the daughter, Miss Jane as the cousin, Mr. Kent will play the part of the father, Mr. Warren the villain, and last but not least, I will play the hero. Now everybody hold their seats and hang on. The show will go on immediately after the overture. All right, boys, here. <laughs> It's going to be a great show. Is everything all set? I just learned that Mr. Warren is in. You can't play the ball. Mr. Warren is. I know just the man for that. Well, Mr. Merton, we have a jam. One of our cats will take me off suddenly. You're just the man to play the part. There's only a few lines. It'll be easy. Oh, my. Is your costume all right, Mr. Merrin? 
I think so. That's fine. Miss Kent, you're going to be right here when you get ready for it. Thank you. Now, Tony, be sure and keep that spot on the stage. Okay. Hey, what's the matter with this spotlight? I don't know. Well, where's the switch on that thing? Down here somewhere. What's the matter with you? Why don't you keep that thing on? You want to ruin the whole show? Someone kicked the plug out. Well, watch it. All right, folks, now get ready. The over is about over. He said he would be here at one, and it is now three. Woe is me, woe is me. Ah, oh, I hear someone knocking at my door. It must be he. It is he, my love. You have come. Tell you goodbye. Not wisely, but well. I love you and fell into the web you were weaving. A prey to your glance, I dreamed of romance, but you were only deceiving. I'm sorry that I have you. You load me along day by day. I pray that I can forget. <laughs> My love, you need. You'll pay. You'll pay. <laughs> For each bit of joy that you gave. My tears, I've cancelled the death. I should hate you, I know, I love you. I'm so sorry that we ever met. <laughs> you knew well just what you were doing. The devilish plot you are brewing to snail some poor fool who was only a tool for the siren he thought he was wooing. Oh, those sweet perfume kisses you fed me on that path to destruction you led me, like that passionate war. Oh, so fair, yet so false. You knew that you never would wed me. <laughs> and now that the truth has been spoken, you dangle my heart like a token. In the depths I may sink. With regret you will think of the youth you have ruined.
Shot through the heart. Will the passengers please leave the salon? that gun, Henry. You will all go to your rooms at once and keep yourselves in readiness for questioning. I'll hold a formal inquest as soon as possible. Don't worry, Jane. This is an unfortunate accident. I don't think so, Captain. He was murdered. On what do you base your suspicions? Well, I can't tell you just yet. But I've got my own ideas about this thing, and if you don't mind, I'd like to do a little investigating on my own. I'd be glad of your help. When are you going to hold the inquest? Tomorrow morning. I think I'll have a little dope for you by that time. Do you mind if I take that gun? Of course not. I'll report to you later. This isn't the gun you loaned us for the show, is it? No, sir. The gun I loaned you was a Colt. This is a Remington. That's all I wanted to know. Thanks. investigating Graham's room and somebody came in and we had a scuffle and I got cracked on the head. Feel better now? Yeah, I'm all right. It's just a bump. Could you recognize your assailant? No, it's too dark. Oh. The place has been ransacked. All his valuables are missing. Valuable? Yes. The person informs me he had a fortune in cash and securities. Did he get everything? Yes. The man who attacked you is the murderer of Graham. See, if you're feeling better now, I think I'll go back to my cabin. I'll be all right. Now remember, keep your chin up. Nothing to worry about. What are you, pounds of Bosley? Yeah. First that all, collect. Yes, sir. Come in here and take a radiogram.
Mr. Graham. I never met the man before in my life. You never saw him before? Never. Did you ever see that before? to do? Put a rope around our necks? Well, how else could I do it? I told you I'd handle it, didn't I? Yeah, that's what you said. But what did you do about it? Nothing. Yes, and been better if you'd done nothing, too. You're so smart. Well, let me tell you something. You're involved in this mess just as much as I am. See me? Oh, yes, sir. Your money's all right. Oh, five thousand bucks, huh? Oh, no, sir. A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Yes, sir. Why, that... All right, give it to me. I've deducted the ninety-two dollars for the cable, you said. Eight bucks. Was there any message come with this? Yes, sir. Take another cable. No story unless I get my money. Stop. Price now two thousand. Charge it. Hope it says that. That isn't it. All right, all right. How much is it? That would be uh, seven fifty. like to add? Nerds.
Oh, the cop here! Quick, come and get me! What are you doing in there? I was waiting for you and I fell in the water. Did you send that note to me? Sure, and I've got something I've got to tell you. Well, why don't you tell me? That's what I've been trying to do. It's about the murder. Now listen. Tony. Yes. Well, why didn't you tell me that before? Oh. trying to do, Haynes? Put me on a spot? You saved me the trouble. You put yourself on a spot. Why did you bump him off? Oh, now listen, you're a wise guy. You got me wrong. Just like every crook I ever knew, you talked out of turn. Meaning what? A little talk you had with Gloria on the boat deck yesterday. Oh, I didn't mean a thing, Steve. We were talking about a note that Gloria was sapping up to send to Graham. You know, Graham was giving her the runaround. She was plenty burned. Oh, no, you're barking up the wrong tree. The best tree I know. Yeah, well, let me give you a tip. It was the Muggs room steward that pulled that job. I saw him through a porthole. Graham was sore because the steward entered the cabin without knocking. He kicked a tray of drinks in his face. Well, that's a lowdown, even if it does make a stool pigeon out of me. I don't believe you, Tony. And in case you want to make a getaway, the swimming's not crowded out there. I'm terribly worried about Father, Captain Moore. He's brooding so over this awful accident. I know, dear. But circumstances are against him. He did make some incriminating remarks. Oh, but, Captain, you've known my father for years. I know, dear. But you must realize that the loss of his fortune made him bitter. Don't worry. You know I'll do all I can.
What code is this? 64. Take a look. It belongs to a steward named Lindner. Thanks, buddy. He died from concussion of the brain. And he's the only man on this ship that knows who changed those guns. I'm sorry, sir. I've searched the entire ship and can't find him. It's just as much your duty to help solve this murder. It's a little unusual, but... Uh... Then you'll do it? Thanks, Doctor. Push this off to Haynes. This will straighten him out on that Graham matter. Captain, would you do something for me? Certainly. Get everyone involved in this thing in the Veranda Cafe in one hour. All right. Thank you. Before we sailed on this voyage, I met the real John Graham, and he induced me to invest all my savings in one of his enterprises. And he knew, must have known, that at that moment his empire was crumbling. <coughs> Captain, the loss of all your money hardly justifies murder. Now, if I were young. But when a man is past 65, making his last voyage before retiring on a pittance, 
That's different. My wife and I had picked out a little place in Connecticut where together we had hoped to coast into our final port. That dream is over. Man, me. And he fired me. <laughs> 